All right. Uh, now that we know a lot about memory allocation, we know uh, some of its basics, we know some details implementations and so on. Um, let's talk about something called garbage collection. We're trying to make a lot of this automatic, right? So far, we have assumed that applications are going to malloc and then free whenever they don't need it anymore. But it turns out that that's, that can be a pain and a big source of, of uh, memory problems like leaks and so on. Okay? So that's why a garbage collection was invented. So it's, uh, it provides automatic reclamation of heap allocated storage. So for example, suppose that you have a function foo that has a pointer p, it allocates, does a malloc, allocates, and then when this function returns, this pointer is going to be gone. So there's nothing that points to the allocated block anymore. That means that the, the block p is now garbage because nobody can reference it. Okay? So, and, uh, so you can just go and automatically free it. And garbage collection uh, does that. This is automatic freeing of blocks that are no longer uh, useful, that we know are no longer useful. Okay? So uh, this is very common in functional languages, scripting languages, and uh, modern object-oriented languages. So like things like Lisp, ML, Java, this common Java, Perl, Mathematica, Python, and so on. So there are also variants of uh, garbage collectors, called conservative garbage collections, for C and C++. They have to be conservative because uh, C and C++ are very flexible uh, in how they support pointers, and that makes uh, implementing garbage collection hard, so they have to be conservative. Okay? It works, but it, can, it, can't, uh, it might not be able to collect all garbage. So let's see some of the core questions of, of uh, garbage collection. The first one is knowing when memory can be freed. So in general, it's very hard to know what's going to be used in the future, since it depends on conditions and so on. So we have to have a way of knowing that it's never going to be used again. But so uh, we can know when certain blocks are no longer reachable. There's nothing that points to them. So if you, if you have blocks in your heap, but we know there are no pointers to those blocks, we know for sure that those blocks can be uh, collected, okay? can, can be freed. But for that, the allocator needs to know what is a pointer and what's not a pointer. How can you do this? Well, it needs language support. It needs to, or it need, you need to be disciplined on how you use pointers. Okay? So uh, there will be some support. Either the program is going to declare what's pointer, what's not pointer, or the language supports it, and so on. Okay? So we're going to make some assumptions about pointers in the rest of this, uh, of this video. First, a memory allocator can distinguish pointers from non-pointers. So all pointers point to the start of a block in the heap, and the application cannot hide pointers. For example, you cannot uh, cast them into int and then back again to hide pointers. Okay, so that's what I mentioned before, discipline use of pointers. Okay. There are many uh, garbage collection algorithms. You know, one of the classic, one, classic ones is mark and sweep, which is going to, we're going to see in this video now. Uh, it doesn't move blocks around, it just collects them. Okay. Um, unless you, you if you compact, then you're effectively moving it, but um, uh, we're not going to be looking at that. So anyways, there's a bunch of, uh, uh, of algorithms. And note that it started a long time ago, 1960s. So it's, been, it's been a problem for a while. If you're interested in learning, we're going to give you a basic overview in this video. But if you do want to learn more, there's this really nice book, uh, Garbage Collection Algorithms for Automatic Dynamic Memory uh, by Jones and Lynn. It's a really cool book. If you're interested in that, I definitely encourage you to read it. So let's get started with the basics. First of all, we're going to look at memory as a graph, as a directed graph. Okay? So each uh, allocated heap block is a node in the graph, and each pointer is an edge in the graph. Okay? So in locations that are not in the heap that contain pointers into the heap are called root nodes. There are things that are outside the heap. So these are the heap nodes, these are the, the, the root nodes. Okay? So green nodes here are reachable, meaning that there is a pointer from the roots to them. And uh, the other ones are not, uh, the ones in red are not reachable, okay? So, and we define reachable as follows. A node is reachable if there's a path from any root node to, uh, to that node, okay? So, for example, so this one is green because there's a path, this one is green because there's a path through here. But now this one, these ones are not reachable because there's no way to get from any of the root nodes to them, okay? So, and these ones are, are the ones that we're going to consider garbage, are the ones that we're going to... Uh, collect, okay? So let's see it, how mark and sweep works. That's one of the classic simplest algorithms that, that do that. And that can be built on top of malloc and free package. So we, we allocate using malloc until you run out of space and then you do garbage collection, 
Okay? And when, when you're out of space, here's what you're going to do. We're going to use an extra mark bit in the head of each block. Okay? And then we have this mark phase that starts at all of the roots and sets a mark bit on each reachable block. Okay? And once we do that over the entire heap, we can sweep, scan over all blocks in the heap and free the ones that are not marked because we know that those are not reachable. Okay? So here's an example, a visual example. Uh, here's what we have before mark. We have a root uh, node that points here. Okay? So from there we're going to traverse. No, we, we're going to re recursively traverse this and mark the free block. So from here we can reach here, so we mark this one. Okay? So from this one we can reach this one, so we can mark this one. And from, uh, so since we point here from this one, we can reach here, so we mark this one. Okay, once that's done, we're going to have the sweep phase, which we know that these here were not, this was not marked, and this was not marked, so we can go ahead and free both of them. Pretty simple, right? So, let's think of a, at a simple implementation, but we need some assumptions for that. First, this new, this function new here, uh, with n returns a pointer to a new block, uh, with all locations cleared. Okay, it's awesome. And read bi, reads the location i of block b into a register, okay? And write uh, bi and v, writes v into a location i of block b. So it does this. It just had you know, location i of block b receives v, okay? And each block is going to have a header word uh, that's pointed by uh, b minus 1, okay? So having these restrictions here, you know, so if, if if we're going to use this function, if applications use these functions, now we can actually keep track of what is pointers and what is location, what's being used, and so on. Okay. So the functions used by the garbage collection is going to be as follows: we're going to check whether a certain um, p is a pointer to a block. Okay. So whether something, whether p, so if you pass p as a parameter, this returns true if p happens to be a pointer to a block. Length of p just tells us the size of uh, the block, not including the header, and get roots returns all of the roots in the system. Root, again, roots are all of the pointers that are outside the heap. Okay? All right, so let's see how this works. So this is the mark phase. We start with a, we start with a pointer P. Okay? So if, it's, if P is not a pointer, you just return. Okay? So also, if it's already marked, we return as well. Okay? But now we go, if, if we're here, it's because it is a pointer, it hasn't been marked, so we mark it. And not only that, we're going to go over the entire uh, block pointed by P, and we're going to go call market. So parts of it are going to be pointers. Parts of this block is not going to be pointers. Okay, so we, we recurse. So this is going to mark the entire um, graph. So we're going to traverse the entire heap and mark it uh, uh, and, and mark whatever is a pointer and uh, and so on. Okay. Now uh, sweep is going to use length to find the next block. Okay, so we're going to start with P, and uh, we know we know where, where it ends. Okay, so uh, while P has not uh, reached the end, if the mark bit is set, we clear the mark bit. Now, if the allocated bit is set, so but if, if it's not marked and the allocate bit is set, we're going to go and free it because we know it's allocated but it's not marked. It means it's not reachable. Okay, great. So now we're going to go to to the next pointer by just adding length. Okay? That's pretty cool. Pretty simple. Now, how would we make that work in C? Well, the challenge of doing this in C is that, remember that we need this function, say that whether uh, certain location is a pointer? So, uh, in C, anything can be a pointer. So, that, that's a, a little bit complicated. So, you have to keep track of when you put pointers. You have to t somehow tell a runtime system that a certain location is a pointer. Okay? So, uh, but also in C, a pointer can point you to the middle of an allocated block. So that makes it tricky to find allocated, uh, allocated blocks in the mark phase, okay? So there are ways to solve this, as I said, by calling the runtime system, conveying information, and so on. Um, but the, the upshot is that uh, we can make it work somehow, but it's going to be conservative. It might miss blocks. It's, everything that it marks, everything that it decides that can be collected, indeed can be collected. However, you might miss some unreachable blocks and not free those. So it's not, uh, it might miss something, but um, it's, uh, it should work reasonably well. Okay, see you soon.